Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar, where we will cover the topic of, of creating the BIM, BIM, uh, BIM libraries, BIM content, without creating them. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, introduce our today's guests. So uh, we, the guests will represent different uh, perspectives related to BIM, different classification system, and also the IT world. Uh, as a first, I would like to to introduce you to Piotr. Piotr is a, is a, is an architect, is a BIM consultant uh, who specializes in preparing the the BIM content in in Revit. Piotr, if you could say a few words about yourself. Uh, hello there, uh, and for the first, uh, thank you for the invitation for this webinar. Uh, I am responsible in at Pit Drone Company for providing uh, Revit families uh, for producers and uh, architects. For, I think, a uh, few years. Okay, thank you, Piotr. Uh, Piotr will cover the, the topic related with Revit in particular. In addition to Piotr, uh, uh, we also uh, uh, have on board Daniel. Daniel uh, represents skilled people and he takes active part in the co-class specification. Daniel, if you could say more about yourself. Yes, hi. Thank you, Morrison. Thank you for having me on this webinar. Uh, my name is Daniel uh, uh, Dahlström, uh, impossible in English. Uh, I'm the former uh, product owner of the, of the technical platform of CoClass, the, the latest classification system from Sweden for all built environments. Uh, today I'm, I'm working uh, for, for a company called Skilled People. We're working with digitalization uh, of the construction industry, uh, creating products based on, on CoClass and also consulting and helping uh, different companies uh, in the area around BIM and the construction uh, process. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit okay. about CoClass today. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you for the intro. And the last uh, last, attempt, uh, last speaker is Adam. Adam uh, represents the, the BIM streamer platform, uh, BIM content management system. Adam, if you could tell more about yourself. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is uh, Adam Koinca. I am uh, co-founder of uh, Sagiton and uh, BIM streamer uh, platform. Mm. I am responsible for uh, platform development and uh, discussions with uh, manufacturers about their requirements and needs, and then we expand the, the platform for that for that features. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam. Thank you for for the intro, and uh, I will tell a bit how the the, the webinar will be conducted. Uh, to so that you can und understand the, the the whole concept so the, the webinar will be split in three parts it would be more like a discussion panel in the first part we will cover the topic of why actually the bim is is, is used by, by by the by the manufacturer why they need it the the second phase of, of the discussion will cover the the challenges around the bim and uh, explaining why the manufacturers why so many ma manufacturers still don't have the bim content or they have it in a very limited in a very limited version and uh, the last part uh, is actually the the, um, the the main part of the webinar we will try to tell about some strategies of preparing the beam content even those that doesn't even require to to create the beam content at all so uh, let's start and first question is for piotr Pio, you are the designer. You are the you are the Revit consultant. If you could tell more, why actually manufacturer needs BIM? Why manufacturer needs the BIM content, BIM objects? Uh, okay, uh, BIM objects for uh, for manufacturers uh, should be, in my belief, uh, a part, as part of uh, documentation uh, for uh, the designers, which is provided for the. Uh, for the designers uh, from the manufacturers. It should uh, uh, connect uh, all the documentation, and, uh, uh, PDF files, the CAD files, uh, the geometry, uh, and maybe even contacts uh, to the manufacturer. All of this information uh, should be uh, in a BIM content. Uh, 
it uh, it provides better um, better contact with uh, the designer and uh, uh, better feedback from the designer to the manufacturer. So, so you're saying that the BIM content is actually used uh, as a part of the documentation, and uh, since the the BIM content is used inside the BIM project. Uh, you, from the manufacturer perspective, you're able to do something like a product placement, isn't it? So the, 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 the designer can actually place the manufacturer product inside the BIM uh, project. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, some part, in some part, yes. If you import a concrete, uh, concrete part of uh, Revit content to the, uh, to the project, uh, not, uh, not even Revit content. Uh, beam content. If you import it to the project, maybe uh, it will stay it to the uh, final phase of the project, and maybe okay. the manufacturer will be chosen. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the explanation, Piotr. And now the question to Daniel. Daniel, uh, you, 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 I know that you are working with uh, not only manufacturer but uh, in particular. Uh, resellers and suppliers. Can you put a bit more light on the topic of BIM content, uh, but maybe from the suppliers and resellers perspective, because we know that from the manufacturer perspective, uh, the resellers are the one that actually sells the products. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, as the requirements continuously uh, increase on the properties we build, uh, customers uh, become more and more aware of these requirements, and, and the only way for customers to know if the product meets the set requirements is to actually read ab about the product uh, data and product properties. Um, and, and from a, a man, uh, reseller perspective, um, they, they, they sell whatever products that, that, the, that they can find that fits the needs. So this makes it crucial for manufacturers to have a good data about the product. So that they can pres be prescribed in early stage uh, phases uh, and uh, when, when uh, we're actually setting the requirements, but also for the aftermarket so that more and more people today search and filter for products online, they can actually be found. I have an example of this I'm going to talk about a bit more about later. So, and, and I mean, adding this product data, that's nothing that the resellers or, or suppliers can manage. They will just sell whatever product that fits the requirements and the customer needs. So this is why it's so important for for the manufacturers to to start working with with the proper product data. Okay, thanks, thanks, Daniel. And maybe right now, question to Adam, because Piotr mentioned why they need to, why the manufacturer they need they need the, the data the, the content. Daniel also covered the topic of of, of resellers and, and suppliers. Okay, so so let's say that I, I have a BIM content. I'm a manufacturer. I have a BIM content. How I can use it, uh, where I should publish it, uh, so that uh, either resellers or, or or designers can can utilize it, either to sell my product directly or maybe also to to do the product placement in in the projects. Adam, you're muted. Sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, manufacturers has. Uh, I have two ways uh, where they can uh, publish their uh, BIM content. Uh, the first place are, of course, uh, BIM portals. Uh, there is plenty of them. And the second uh, option is to use their own uh, infrastructure, like uh, web, ap uh, web applications, uh, Revit plugin, or uh, mobile apps. Uh, for manufacturers, it's good to be in as many channels as possible as uh, it increases their brand awareness and make their products available uh, for more users because uh, they, they will be looking, they, they will be available on many, on many channels. Uh, however, the better place where they should where they really must be is their own infrastructure as this is the first place where the designers are looking for uh, the beam content as uh, designers believe that if there is a beam file th the probability that it will be up to date is the uh, the portal of the manufacturer because uh, uh, on the um, on the beam portals very often the files are not updated and uh, designer is not can't be sure 
that the file is uh, is up to date. Thanks, Dan uh, Adam. Maybe one more question referring to what Daniel previously mentioned. You said about two options. So one option is that manufacturer can host the content on on, uh, on their infrastructure, so their own portal, their own add-ons to Revit, Arcanad, whatever, their own mobile apps. But uh, Daniel represents the, the suppliers and, uh, and, and, and resellers part. Could that be the case that this content could also be uh, hosted in this third option, so not on the BIM portal, not on the manufacturer site, but also on the resellers and suppliers sites. Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, and right. if, if I just can add, I, I think that that uh, I mean uh, <clears throat> the the manufacturers don't have the, the the sales organizations to cover all of the all of Europe, maybe. Uh, they they have the sales organization to cover suppliers in all of the countries. So I, I think that they should think of this as a unique selling point uh, in order to get more attention at the, at the suppliers and resellers, because it's it's the resellers that they can only do so much with the products uh, without data. Uh, but the more data they actually get from the manufacturers, the easier they get to sell the, the, their products. Okay, uh, thank thank you, Daniel, for the explanation. Quick, uh, quick uh, verification because Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Sharmer Block and Mr. Putz noted that uh, they can't hear us. Uh, has it already corrected? Do you hear us well? I can hear all. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you for the feedback. Okay, so let's 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 uh, move the discussion further and. Uh, and uh, this uh, this is another question to Piotr. Piotr, could you explain why so many manufacturers still don't have the BIM content or or have it in a limited way? Why why the if if there are so many advantages of having a BIM content, not only from the designer's perspective but also from the perspective of the suppliers and, and the resellers? Why why so many manufacturers still don't have it? What are the challenges which stops them from 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 doing it? Uh, I think uh, one of the biggest challenges is the fact that uh, uh, BIM content is not a uh, default uh, format for creating and designing pro products. Uh, when uh, manufacturer providing uh, PDF files or CAD files, it, this is the files which was created during the design process and, uh, and production process. When manufacturers want to implement BIM uh, to, to his uh, organization, uh, it needs to um, create it from the scratch. Uh, it's only based on uh, on on the documentation. Uh, this is uh, this is of course a big cost uh, for the first thing, and the second thing, it needs to be updated every time. Uh, when the assortment of uh, manufacturers is being updated as well. I see. So, Piotr, you mentioned that that the manufacturer needs to create the BIM content on its own. Does that mean that uh, they also need to have some dedicated team for, for that that is responsible for the BIM content? Or it's more like outsourced? How, how it's conducted? Uh, uh, manufacturers want to uh, want to create their own team because they have to uh, have control over this uh, over this content. It's a uh, it's huge cost. Uh, it's cost where uh, which is uh, uh, stable. Uh, we cannot we cannot fire those people and uh, hire them once again every time of the year uh, because they need uh, constantly updating those files. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Piotr. So, so maybe right now the question to Daniel. Daniel, uh, you were working for a uh, for large uh, reseller in Sweden. I think uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest one in, in the Nordic uh, countries. I'm all, of course, I'm talking about Alcel. Yeah. And uh, you know uh, that uh, when Alcel needs something from the manufacturer, it usually uh, being sorted out uh, very quick, very quickly. Like you know, T say sorted. Uh, how would they say yeah. in the in the tube in the UK? So, uh, uh, how important for the resellers, for the suppliers like Alcel, 
uh, is the to have the correct uh, and uh, right information also including BIM. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that uh, the best way to explain this is actually by true story from from uh, Alcel, one of the Alcel employees that I'm working uh, closely with. Uh, she's the uh, head of uh, uh, master data management, uh, and she was uh, constantly talking to this Italian porcelain company, a porcelain ma manufacturer, about product data. Uh, so they said, yeah, we know that we need to work with this, but we don't have the time. Uh, it's, it's on a five-year plan. Uh, so um, th this, this woman, she's amazing. She, she actually uh, figured out, okay, I have to show them. I have to really show them. So she got on a plane, went down to the factory, opened up her laptop, and did a quick search for porcelain white, with, with, of the color white. And there were none of their products showing up in e-commerce. Uh, there are none of the products showing up in their back office systems when when, they are, when their sellers are actually uh, trying to find these products for, for the clients. And the reason for that is not because they don't have white porcelain. Of course they have, but they didn't have the product data that said that their porcelain was white. So uh, as soon as she showed this to the manager, she, he, he actually understood that this is uh, they are losing money from this. They're losing money because they don't have product data. And so they made this a top priority. And, and from a five-year plan, they went, got back to our cell uh, in, in a couple of weeks with most of the relevant product data that, that our cell needed in order to actually sell their products in a good way. So the, ben the benefits for, for the uh, manufacturers to have close dialogue with, with uh, resellers is that the resellers are, are actually the ones that are out with the fingertop feeling out in the, in the, in the market. Uh, that, that can get back to them with close feedback on what they actually need in, in terms of product data in, so in, in order to find the products that the clients are looking for. And this is also related to the increasing uh, amount of requirements that, uh, that we are facing all the time in construction industry. Uh, and all the requirements uh, uh, makes it so important to have product data so we can actually sort out and filter for these products that meet the requirements. So this is just one example. But I, I think it's it's a good example because uh, in a couple of weeks they had 80% of the data they needed and, and their products were started selling and they actually got an increase of somewhere around 20 or 30% in, in, uh, in the business, in, in the all sell market. Okay, so it's 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 so they are quite persuasive, so to say. When yes, they, they, are. <laughs> they, they, have, they have control of the product data, and they will uh, they help their manufacturers to actually understand what product data is needed and, and why. All right, all right. So so uh, Adam, uh, Daniel, uh, talk about uh, this this perspective. Why the the, uh, the the resellers actually need the up to date data? So let's focus on 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 the challenges, how, how the manufacturer should should address this, or maybe what kind of challenges the manufacturer are facing with, especially if they, they, they're having a pretty wide product portfolio, which may also be different on, on a different market, may, may would like to adapt this product portfolio to specific, let's say, language or, or, a, or a local legal uh, or construction regulations. Uh, what are the challenges and, uh, uh, that, that, that the manufacturer needs to face? And unmute yourself, please. OK, I'm back. Uh, so as, as we know, maybe, uh, maybe, in the third, maybe in the third round, you will have to be reminded. Maybe you will remember. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, please continue. <clears throat> OK, as we know, uh, BIM is the combination of the geometry and the, the data. So uh, it has to be prepared before we will combine them. Uh, so the first challenge for the manufacturer is the preparation of the technical data. Uh, very often manufacturers use some kind of PIM systems, uh, product information management, where they keep the, the technical data that, that are describing their products. However, very often this data is distracted. Uh, they might have a few PIM systems or they have part in PIM, the rest in Excel sheets, or even uh, some some sort of data is even not represented in none of these uh, 
uh, these tools. So the first challenge is to combine all the data they would like to uh, provide for uh, designers in the BIM files in one place. This is the first challenge. The second challenge is to prepare the, the master models, uh, which contain geometry and to which we can inject the, the, the data. And uh, this is the second challenge because uh, manufacturers very often don't have time uh, for preparing such files. They might have uh, no specialist uh, who know uh, uh, Revit and are able to, to prepare such files, or they simply don't want to spend money on it or, or, uh, on this. Uh, let's uh, imagine uh, even if they have both uh, both this, uh, this, uh, these options done, then they have to combine that information. And uh, let's imagine how to do it if you uh, have to do it manually. So uh, let's uh, think that we have manufacturer who has 6, 000, uh, 600 uh, families. Uh, let's say five products per each family. So uh, it gives us around 3,000 uh, products. Then uh, manufacturer would like to provide the, the BIM files for different markets. He is available in 30 countries and would like to provide the information in the dedicated languages. So, for example, in the uh, national language and English as a, as a, as a separate. Uh, so, uh, just for preparing Revit BIM files, they have to uh, prepare uh, 600, 600 uh, uh, multiply 30 countries till uh, multiply uh, two languages. It gives us 36,000 uh, separate uh, Revit files. And uh, now you have to provide all the, let's say, 100 uh, attributes for each product. And uh, even if they do this, but I think it's impossible to prepare such uh, so many files uh, manually, let's imagine that after one month, uh, they will change one attribute or the product uh, is not selling anymore in, uh, in the country and you have to update all of these files. It's, uh, it's nightmare. That's why uh, manufacturers uh, very often uh, don't want to start uh, preparing BIM files because they are just afraid of this. Okay, thanks, thanks Adam for the explanation. Yeah, it, it was quite quite uh, astonishing because you, you said 36,000 uh, files, yeah. uh, different language, different different requirements. Uh, I know that right now you're working on a, on a similar project also over 30 countries, uh, large, uh, large uh, piping and fitting manufacturers. Uh, what was the, the, the most, uh, let's say, challenging part of, of, of this project? If you could, if you could tell some very um, maybe very shortly, what was one of the greatest challenges that you were facing in, in this project? Well, th there was many uh, challenges. Uh, probably I, I won't remember most of them because they were showing up every day. Uh, but uh, very challenging is uh, working with uh, Revit because uh, as this is a software that we can't do anything with it. We have to work, what, work with what is. And uh, if there are some uh, kind of uh, errors, uh, we have to work around somehow, somehow them. So we are able to generate all the files we, we, we have to. And uh, coming back to these 36,000 files, this is just Revit files. Uh, but uh, don't forget that uh, you, can, uh, you have to prepare also other extensions like uh, FBX, IFC, DWG, and well, this is hundreds of thousand files. Yeah, so the, these are a pretty, pretty large number. So, so, so no wonder manufacturer might uh, fear, let's say, um, crushed with with the number of things that needs to be done. So, Piotr, maybe le let's move on to the first part of the question is, and uh, uh, so, so how we how we can sort that out? How we can uh, make the BIM content available? Without having the necessity of creating even a single BIM file, because that was, after all, the the the, the main topic of the webinar. So, what we can do do with that, and how to let manufacturer having their files without giving them necessity 
to create them? Mm, uh, our idea was to simplify the process of uh, creating uh, families and updating them. Uh, so we thought maybe not just fo focusing on uh, things that takes uh, the most of the time, uh, like uh, adapting geometry and focusing on uh, parameters, which is the most important uh, part for uh, for the for the designer which uses this content. Uh, so uh, we, we we are thinking that uh, maybe the generic uh, family, uh, which is uh, available for many uh, manufacturers, should be the base and only updating them and adapt them with uh, parameters uh, which every manufacturer could implement to them uh, i so, think sorry, it, sorry for, yeah. for interrupting maybe i will just try to mm -hmm. get a bit deeper in what, what you're just saying so why do you think that generic content uh, can be used across several manufacturer isn't that the case that uh, let's say uh, um, you know the product look different and uh, and maybe the the generic content will not reflect uh, the way how the, the actual product looks like. Why, why do you think that the generic content, which doesn't even be have, have to be created by manufacturer, but could actually be somehow um, reutilized by them, by several ones, uh, would be mm. sufficient? Uh, okay. Uh, focusing on details in uh, BIM files is not uh, important. It's, uh, it's even uh downside of the content if it's too detailed because it's uh it's too heavy the files are too heavy uh the complete project uh, works uh, worse with uh, heavy files uh, so designers don't want uh, many details in their in their content uh, that's why we're going ahead for uh, for it and say okay maybe even a box uh, should be enough if there are uh, good parameters implemented to them to it and designers said uh, okay it it is uh, enough and even better than uh, than detailed model so when when you're saying about uh, generic content and uh, and parameters what are the most important parameters uh, for from the designer's perspective uh, why the box with very specific parameters is better than a very detailed okay you mentioned about the, the heaviness yeah. of the object of course so so if if, uh, if the computer slows down because uh, i uploaded 90 megabytes file into my project then this is understandable but uh, when you're saying about parameters what are the most important parameters uh, from the perspective of the designers that it should be sufficient even with the generic content uh, okay um, i think it depends uh, on the model of course but uh, the things like size or uh, weight or uh, points of input uh, meps uh, or uh, um, manufacturer name uh, model name uh, maybe contacts to the manufacturer, uh, things like that, which could be implemented by uh, parameters, not by the ge geometry. What about the service zones? Is that uh, relevant? Uh, service zones too, yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, 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 so the, the, our thesis is that the manufacturer doesn't have to create the content on their own. They can reutilize the uh the generic content uh, and uh, to make a generic content manufacturer st specific um can be done by providing manufacturer specific parameters either the the, the geometry ones or non geometry ones like you mentioned the, the name of the model the name of course of the manufacturer maybe some technical approvals i guess um and yeah. uh, and quality certificates which makes the the generic content non-generic uh, uh, so so uh, yeah. i can i can imagine that if you're using the generic content the, the, the content is uh, let's say uh, due to the fact that it, it can be used across several manufactured i believe that's my best guess the, the the time of delivery of such content is relatively reduced and also the cost is smaller isn't it yeah yeah that's right uh, because we don't need to uh, create the content from the scratch this is the first thing uh, the second uh, from the manufacturer 
the most important thing is just to provide parameters, not uh, not all the geometry and uh, many other things. Mm, okay, I, I, I'm more like from the IT world, so, so correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. when we're doing software and we can reutilize the software across uh, several customers, the software, um, due to the fact that it's being used in so many projects, uh, has usually less amount of, of errors, less an amount of the bugs. Does it also yeah. refer to the content? Yeah, because uh, generic content is mostly tested uh, by many, many manufacturers, not only one. Uh, we don't need to uh, fix the bugs every time we create the models because we have created them already. We, we know it works uh, and we, we go and guarantee that. Okay, perfect. So Daniel, uh, the Piotr mentioned that we can use the generic content. All we need to do is to provide the data, <laughs> which, all, which can also, we, can also be a challenge. Uh, it's all about the data, you know. Uh, a, a, a perfect handover from from Piotr because uh, I I agree with all of the, all of the things that he's saying for 100. percent It's and it's it's uh, I'm going to show you my perspective of how to do this. Um, of course, we're uh, I come from the background of, of co class, so for me it's it's really important that uh, we share a common language about how we talk about things. You know, so a window should uh i know i don't know how to say window in polish uh, but it shouldn't be necessary because in co class it's qqa uh, the code is qqa and that's a window in in, in uh, russia polish danish swedish it's it's window you know so <clears throat> and um also uh regarding this generic objects uh, we're talking so much about we have to separate the geometry from the information uh, the geometry isn't, isn't needed in all of the phases. I mean, it's basically needed in, in the later stages of, of uh, the design. Uh, so, uh, and, and that's LOD, you know, uh, level of detail. So, uh, from my perspective, I think, of course, I'm, I'm a bit colored of, of working with Coclas before, but I think that Coclas is actually a true BIM. It, it is uh, building information uh, modeling. Uh, and uh, I mean, Coclas is, is uh, a structured, classified building information models without geometry, and it's object-oriented, uh, just like product information models is. So it's very easy for BIM manager to, to apply and to understand Coclas. Uh, and uh, it's also really easy for the tech side, the, the IT industry, to, to understand how to implement Coclas because it's object-oriented, much like all of the tools and, and the uh, software frameworks that we're working on with today in modern development. Uh, and again, uh, BIM objects are uh, <laughs> object oriented. So you could say that CoClose is actually the information equivalent equivalent of, of the geometrical CAD uh, BIM object, right? Uh, I thought I was going to show you uh, a quick run through of uh, how CoClose structure for, for one product could look like. Is that OK? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, Marcin, could you let me know when you actually see the screen? Is it out? Yeah. Yeah. We see. We see it. All right. So uh, this is going to be a really, really quick run by run through of uh, Cochlear Studio. Uh, anyone that's interested in knowing more can contact contact me afterwards. Uh, but basically, it's it's a, a set of, of a tables uh, for all built environments. It starts from construction complex and, and runs down to entity space and, and functional systems and constructive system components. So the table that I'm going to show you today is, is uh, components. Uh, I'm going to I have an example here of an electrical motor. Um, so and and uh, I can uh, find this electrical motor in this hierarchy here. Uh, it's a, a driving object, electromagnetic rotational driving object, electric motor. So I can I can add this to what we call a cochlear structure, uh, and I can have as many as I want, uh, which means I can actually start creating complex uh, products, which uh, is uh, a, a combination of, of a lot of com components, right? So think 
in the terms of a pump station, you need an electrical motor, you need some sensors, you need a flow uh, valve and, and stuff like that. So you can actually create those models here. Uh, today I have made a really, really, really simple uh, product, electrical motor, where I've added uh, properties. So we have electrical poles, two of them, uh, electrical effect, 700, and you have the unit uh, out here, watts, nominal voltage, and, and stuff like that. So in this way, you can actually start creating your uh, product beam models uh, without touching geometry at all. Because this is everything that uh, Piotr or you guys would need uh, in order to actually start adding uh, value to a generic BIM object, right? And the best part of this is that uh, as soon as you created this one, it's, it's actually uh, viable to, uh, able to, to distribute this over an API. So this is the uh, global unique identifier. This is the only one in the world that could look like this. And I can get this over an API, uh, and the result would look like this. So I'm just going to quick show you. If you look at this motor, just uh, take a look at some of the uh, uh, properties that we have here. You're going to find them in the, in the API JSON results as well. We have uh, pulse effect, voltage, uh, nominal current, and stuff like that. I also added supplier here. I'll sell, of course, uh, and uh, some product sheets and, and electrical schemas and st stuff like that. I can, I can add anything, basically. There are somewhere around seven to 800 different attributes that you could add to the product, right? Um, and this is the JSON result. You can see from the top here, the title, simple pro uh, product, electrical motor. We had to identify the classification, MAA, and the title. And uh, down here, all the properties start. Uh, we have the electrical poles with the value of two of them. Uh, we have uh, electrical effect. So every, every single property and value that we added to this uh, product classification model, uh, I would call it, uh, is in the JSON result. And that's like a dream for, for you guys, because you could, you could add this. You could get this data, this product data, over an API. Uh, and, and uh, get it into this generic BIM object. Uh, so you have all the data. And, and it doesn't matter what system you are working in. If you're working in Revit or Archicad or whatever, Tecla, Magicad, it doesn't matter. Because as, soon as, as, as long as you're talking in the same language, which would be Cocos in this case, uh, it doesn't matter what, lang what country we come from or what tools we're working in, we have a common language to call Cocos. Right. So this is also a utilizer to start working with generic BIM objects, uh, I would say. Uh, and, and again, this is a really, really quick run through. So anyone that, that's interested in knowing more about Coclus and how to implement Coclus in your, in your own uh, company and your own uh, software, uh, please get back to me and, and uh, I can help you out. Daniel, thank you very much for a very detailed explanation. Uh, yeah, indeed, co class uh, in a combination with with a generic content could be could be pretty cool. Piotr, uh, if you could tell, um, because I, I have some question maybe before we jump to to Adam. So, uh, uh, if I got it right, if uh, for instance you um, beam drawn or some some other content provider would provide a generic content. Which uh, base the parameters based on, let's say, co-class name specific attributes. Then, uh, as far as, for instance, manufacturer would have already the data in in some classification standard, like like for instance, co-class. Would that mean that there is pretty much nothing else to do for the manufacturer just to to share us with the data and use the generic content? Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, this is the goal to uh, to provide generic content, which is uh, as most adaptive as it's possible, and uh, imp and implement to this content the parameters, the parameters uh, to their own, and uh, adapt uh, this generic content uh, to the uh, manufacturer needs and uh, their specification. Which is, uh, if we use a call class, uh, will be uh, international usable. Yeah. 
Yeah, I forgot to say something that that's kind of important. Can I get like twenty more seconds? Go ahead. <laughs> sure. <Thank you. laughs> uh, I'm just gonna show you the screen one once uh, again because uh, what's what's also really important to understand is that that Coclus is uh, a classification system for all of the life cycle, right? Uh, the the window. Uh, may change, or the electrical motor in this in this case may change uh, requirements over time. Uh, but the fact that we have the functional need for an electrical motor won't probably change. So, if you look here, uh, we have the classification MAA electrical motor. So, in the early phase uh, of, of design, you would probably not uh, end up uh, delivering all of these uh, properties, right? Because you might not even know them. But you can still uh, put in a requirement that we need this MMA electrical motor. So that's going to live all through of the life cycle. That could live for hundreds of years. We need this electrical motor. But the, the properties can vary depending on the needs that we have right now. Okay? Was it fussy or did, it, did I make it clear? <laughs> Yeah, I I think that uh, if if there are some questions, we will keep it for the Q and A session. Yeah, yeah. So uh, then we would be able to ask Daniel for uh, for any clar clarification of of this explanation. Uh, maybe let's let's continue with uh, maybe let's continue with, uh, with our discussion. So right now, a question to you, Adam, because uh, Piotr mentioned about the generic content. Manufacturer doesn't have to create one; they can reutilize it. Okay, we know it's cheaper, it's faster, uh, it probably has a lot less bugs. Daniel mentioned that uh, instead of uh, creating a very specific uh, set of parameters, we could use uh, we could use some standard. Uh, we talked about Coclast as an example, uh, but uh, okay, so we have the data, we have the generic content. What next? Because I need to have a I need to have a non-generic content with my specific data. How to do that? Yeah, so uh, previously we said about the the challenges that manufacturers have to face with and uh, the number of files we have to uh, create and then keep maintaining. So uh, how to simplify that process as much as possible? So the easiest way is to use the data we already have prepared and to use the, the generic files uh, and then combine them. However, to combine the information with the files, we need some kind of contract between the generic files and the data. Uh, of course, we can prepare one just for the manufacturer for uh, some kind of uh, generic files and the data they have. Uh, but we can also use the existing uh, classifications that we already have, and they have information about the geometry. The example is uh, ATIMMC that was uh, uh, that was uh, uh, prepared in uh, in Netherlands and is the extension of the ATIM classification. It's extended by the geometry and the engineering information. So the information about the uh, the height, depth, uh, weight, and uh, I don't know. Uh, mm, uh, connection points and other uh, geometry information. Uh, we can, uh, if the manufacturer already has this data, then he don't have to prepare anything. If not, then we have to prepare some kind of standard between the generic files and the um, and the data. Then we can put it to the platform, and the platform will uh, uh, generate. Uh, generate the files automatically. So we'll inject the, the prepared data into the files. And uh, manufacturer can uh, um, use every data they have. So for example, if they have uh, data described in the co-class classification, uh, for example, what uh, Daniel described a minute, a minute ago, then he can use it. He can inject those data into the files and publish them, for example, for the uh, Scandinavia uh, countries. Uh, if they have uh, information in ETIM, he can publish it. If if has information in different classification, all of them can be injected automatically to the files. Uh, so this is the the case, the easiest case, how to uh, 
how to uh, prepare BIM files. And they will be, those files will be the most desired by the designers as they will be light and ready to use uh, in their projects. However, from marketing point of view uh, and for uh, salesmen, uh, the level of details might, might be not enough of such uh, generic files. They might require the uh, dedicated uh, master models for, the, uh, for uh, their products, uh, which shows the products how they really look like with uh, all the roundness and, uh, uh, and details. In such cases, the best case for the manufacturer is to prepare the dedicated uh, Revit files. But uh, if they don't have, they have don't, pos uh, it's, if it's not possible for them to create them, uh, there is a third option to create such, uh, uh, such files. Uh, Almost uh, every manufacturer uh, have information in CAD files, uh, very detailed. Uh, we can convert those CAD files to Revit files and, uh, and use them. Uh, what is the problem with, with such files? We can't treat them as BIM files as this is the single object. Uh, we can't put there the connection points and uh, service area. However, they look very nice. They are in a uh, high level of details. Mm, so we can generate the, uh, the draws. We can ger generate the uh, 360 degree views of these objects like uh, OBG and uh, use them, for example, in augmented reality. And uh, so I have presented the three options of the files, what, how we can uh, prepare the data. And uh, what if uh, the manufacturer has some part in one option, some part of portfolio in second option, and some in, in third option? If we can combine them. Yes, we can. Uh, it's not said that the manufacturer needs to use just one option for all of their products. He can uh, combine them as, as they like. Hello, are you there? Yeah, yeah, so we have some connection breakdown. Okay, so, so Adam, you mentioned that the manufacturer can can, can combine the data uh, or combine the, the strategies, right? So uh, as, as for my understanding, if manufacturer already has some content for some part of their portfolio, which is a dedicated one, it doesn't stop him from, from using the generic content for the rest of the portfolio or more, maybe for the subset of the portfolio that uh, that is so, let's say, repeatable or simple or in any way uh, um, easy to manage to use the generic content. So as far as I understand, the strategy might be in manufacture product portfolio and it can be combined, right? Yes, exactly. All right, all right. So, so you also mentioned about the secret platform. I, I know that uh, which platform you're referring to, but what do you mean by platform? How how we can combine the, the data with uh, with the with the generic content? Uh, yeah, our system is a kind of platform that is able to combine the mm, uh, the master models with the data in automatically way in an automatic way. <clears throat> I mean, uh, and I, I know that you, that you and Piotr prepared some uh, some sort of a demo that presents the utilization of the uh, of the generic content uh, with a combination of some manufacturer specific data, right? Yes, exactly. And uh, and so so I would kindly ask you to show us the demo. Um, probably you should see the the video in a second, and and Adam, if you could put more lights on that. Okay, so I hope everybody can see the, the video. We have uh, prepared a generic uh, master model for window and we uh, use, the, use it uh, for uh, two different uh, manufacturers. Uh, we inject their uh, different geometry data and uh, different technical data. So uh, in a minute you can, you can see that uh, we can, uh, in automatic way, 
generate uh, different uh, PIM files. Uh, so at the moment, uh, system is, is uh, taking the, the generic uh, Revit file and the data defined for, the, for, uh, for that manufacturer and is sending request to Revit to generate uh, uh, Revit files with uh, information dedicated for that manufacturer and uh, uh, generate uh, different uh, files uh, that you can uh, see right now. Uh, all these views, all the gallery and this 3060 uh, degree view uh, was uh, were generated uh, automatically and uh, in the download section, which should be showed uh, in a second, uh, there are uh, all the extensions and files that are generated, they were, they, that were generated from the Revit during the synchronization process. And uh, you can see we have uh, RFA, uh, IFC, DWG, DEXF, SAT, FBX, uh, uh, for three, 3D and uh, in 2D we have also uh, uh, images and, uh, uh, and DWG 2D files. At the moment we are opening the, um, the Revit file and uh, you can see that we have uh, the, this object contains uh, uh, three parts, uh, three frames and uh, you can see the, uh, the identity data for uh, Aluprof uh, manufacturer. And uh, in a minute you will see the, uh, the file for another manufacturer. You can see that the window looks different. Uh, we have two frames in this example and all these files were generated uh, a minute ago. Uh, I mean, uh, during the, the the movie was created and uh, you can see the, the data in the in the portal that they are changed and of course corresponding files uh, that were created are always uh, are also uh, uh, with information dedicated for that uh, manufacturer so in a minute you will see the rfa generated for another manufacturer yeah, we can see that the number of uh, frames is two and the thickness is uh, different and we have different identity data for that uh, kind of window. Yeah, and some, some views. And uh, now we are downloading all the files and uh, we will show you the, the results of the um, other uh, formats that were generated, like uh, DWG uh, and, uh, and other extensions, mm, that they are really, mm, they uh, were generated from the different uh, uh, data. Yeah, here the window with two frames. <coughs> And now we'll have the data with three frames. <clears throat> yeah, and if something change, for example, for the product, then we will synchronize the products again and the changes will be visible in the files automatically. So we don't have to uh, change and maintain all those these hundred thousand of files uh, manually, but just provide the new data and the system will do everything for you. So, so Adam, does that mean that it's not only about BIM, but it, it can also be used for CAD, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, mm, designers usual, uh, usually require uh, and use files in different tools. Uh, like Archicad, uh, Revit, SolidWorks, and uh, and others, and uh, it's good to that manufacturers would provide uh, files in different extensions, and with uh, with this kind of process, you can generate all of them uh, out of the box.
Okay. Okay, uh, Adam, thank you very much for, for the demo. So, so we just to summarize, we, we've realized that uh, the manufacturer doesn't have to create the, the, the BIM content of its own. They can reutilize the, uh, the, the, the ready-made generic files. Uh, the the ready-made generic files may follow some standardization. We mentioned about CoClass, we mentioned about ETMMC. Uh, of course, manufacturers, as, far, as I understand, can have their own classification, and it's just, it, it is just a matter of adapting the, the generic content to meet the manufacturer, the manufacturer data if it's not classified in some, in some standard way, isn't it? It's more like a question to Piotr, I would say. Piotr? Piotr, you are muted. You're muted, yeah. So, so, so the question is: if manufacturer doesn't have a, a data in a in a specific uh, classification system format like CoClass or ETMMC, can it be somehow adapted to generic content if the generic content follows some uh, some some standard rules? Why not? Uh, it's uh, the clue. Uh, the clue is to implement those uh, parameters to, to to the generic content. Uh, and make it as automatically as possible to um, to engage a manufacturer in a, as small as part as is possible. Okay, okay, that sounds that sounds like uh, an interesting <laughs> option. So uh, um, I think that we covered our uh, our discussion, and right now we would like to kindly ask you. Uh, did yeah, the yeah. Maybe I will add one thing. Uh, uh, I will add something to to this. Uh, actually, uh, different uh, uh, users, designers, architects, and uh, other users of BIM files require different data in those files. And uh, with this automatic process, you can uh, predefine the files for the uh, for each of this group. So. Uh, you can divide them, the information not only by classification and countries, but also uh, by the information they really need. <clears throat> so, does that mean that if I'm a if I'm a designer from from let's say uh, from the UK, I might ask for the content which has a different set of attributes than if yes. I would, for instance, in German or wherever. Yes, exactly. And for example, if you are designers and you would like just you need just five attributes describing the product, you can uh, uh, you can generate such files for those kind of group. And uh, from uh, for marketing, probably they will need as much uh, attributes as they uh, as as much as possible. So, for example, you will put all of the all of them uh, all of uh, the attributes you have out there. So, for example, one hundred. Grouped in some uh, group in some groups. I see, I see. Okay, thanks, thanks for the explanation, Adam. Um, we're open for the questions from the audience right now. We, we reached the, the end of the panel, and uh, we, if there are any questions from the audience, we're in the Q and the Q and A session right now. So, so we're open for for your inquiries. I see that there is no um, there is no questions here. Uh, uh, all right then. So oh, I think that uh, okay. I see one question. What do designers pay attention to when choosing BIM fa uh, facilities? Uh, so so it's probably a question to you, Piotr. Um, uh, what designers focus on when they they would like to choose, uh, let's say, one BIM content, one BIM object? Rather than the other one, uh, what, what's their their main, let's say, uh, motivation? You're muted, Piotr. If you could speak up. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, from the designer perspective, is uh, to choose. Uh, okay, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Please continue. Uh. I thought I, I've made something wrong. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, so from my perspective, as a designer perspective, uh, um, the main, uh, um, the most important thing is to choose uh, beam content, which is uh, 
as most compact as possible, uh, which has this information which I need. Uh, parameters is the most important, I think, uh, from the designer perspective. Uh, not uh, not the detailed uh, geometry because detailed geometry, as I said before, is uh, very heavy and the uh, model starts to uh, work uh, not so well. Uh, um, but I I need to uh, I need parameters to to make tables with uh, with materials in my project. This is the most important thing. Okay, so, uh, to have the information to to manage the project in the next steps. Yeah. Okay. Th thanks for the explanation. Uh, we had another question. Uh, what does the BIM implementation process looks like at the manufacturer side? And this maybe is a, more like a question to you, Adam. Okay, so usually when we start working with manufacturers, we uh, start from the discussion. We are trying to find out what are the requirements of the manufacturer and uh, we are checking the, the state, uh, what kind of information they have. So what kind of data, in what kind of systems, if they have PIM, if they don't have, if they have data in uh, Excel sheet, what kind of data they would like to provide uh, uh, to master models. If they have master models, and uh, if not, how? what are their possibilities to create them? If they want to use the generic ones or uh, prepare the dedicated ones. And then we, when we know what they really need, then we uh, design the process, how to start and uh, how to go through it and how to finish it. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I I, uh, I will get. Uh, I'm informing that at the top uh, of the screen, you should see the, the the button to register for our next webinar, where we will cover the topic uh, of transferring the data from the PIM uh, into into the BIM files. Our guest uh, it, it will be a representative of one of the the PIM vertors uh, uh, called Akinio. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, you're welcome to also participate in this meeting. And uh, I think that uh, since we don't have any further questions, uh, uh, I would like to close the session. I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, I'm of course invite you for for the next webinar, and I hope we, we can stay tuned. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to all our attendees, and thank you very much to all, all our speakers, to all our presenters. Thank, Thank you very you much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.